Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone, State Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the annual Russia conference of the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs, which is actually the 30th of its kind. My name is Kristin Fiesta. I'm a senior researcher and head of the research group on Russia, Asia, and international trade at NITI. We are delighted to see so many familiar faces and also some new ones in the audience today. Welcome also to those following the conference online. The entire conference is streamed and will be available on NUTI's YouTube channel afterwards. First, some necessary practicalities for the in-house audience. Uh, you can find the emergency exits marked on both sides of the room. Um, and the bathrooms you can find across the hall outside and to the left and then again the left. Today's conference has the title Wartime Russia, Weak or Strong. Russia's war against Ukraine has caused major changes both inside and outside of Russia. First and foremost, it has tremendous and devastating effects in Ukraine. It has changed European security and foreign policy, as we will discuss later today in panel three. The war has also had significant impacts inside Russia, affecting society and its relations with the state, as well as the economy. To discuss these questions today, we have invited prominent scholars and rising academic stars to present new research on developments in Russia. We will have three panels and a keynote speech by Professor Timothy Fry. There will be time for questions and answers from the audience in all sessions. Lunch will be served in the hall outside, and there will be time during the breaks to hopefully continue our discussions. The conference ends at three. Russia's authoritarian turn and the war has also had important consequences for our opportunities to do research in and on Russia. What is really happening in Russia today, and how can we know? We hope and believe that today's conference will provide some answers to these questions, and also pose new ones for us to continue to seek answers to. New, independent, deep, and critical research on Russia is particularly important for Norway as a neighboring country. But the need for knowledge on Russia today is not limited to academia. It is also important for Norwegian policy and decision makers and for the Norwegian society. We are thus very grateful to have State Secretary Eivind Wald Petersson from the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs with us to give some opening remarks. Welcome, State Secretary. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a very good morning uh, to you all. I would like to um, start with a point that I have lost count how many times I've heard our current prime minister make. And I think many of you have heard it be before as well. Uh, and that is simply that from the Norwegian side, we take pride in the fact that we were one of the few countries that maintained our Russia expertise even throughout the optimistic 1990s. Because we cannot escape our geography, we cannot choose our neighbors. And after the Putin regime chose to pursue a war of aggression and a full-scale invasion of one of its other neighbors, it has obviously become more difficult to maintain and develop expertise and understanding of everything Russia. But it has become no less important. Russia will remain a major challenge in the foreseeable future. And knowledge and experience on Russia and how to interact with Russia in changed circumstances will continue to be of great importance, especially to neighboring states such as Norway. This is also personal to me. I spent my childhood growing up, and I've checked, 6.9 kilometers away from the Soviet and then the Russian border. And on Friday, I'll be traveling back to Cherkines as we mark the 80th uh, anniversary of the liberation uh, of the eastern part uh, of Finnmark by Soviet forces. But today, even with limited interaction between our two governments, there will, will from time to time be need for contact. For example, when handling incidents or accidents. And speaking from my perch in the foreign ministry, uh, such matters are often related to the high north, including the maritime domain. For example, 
this summer's prisoner exchange, the helicopter accident on Svalbard, or the fact that the Bilateral Fisheries Commission is meeting again this week over video conference. At the same time, we need to have the competence and capacity to follow and analyze Russian hostile behavior and to stand united with allies and friends in deterring and countering the Russian regime. There is a need for a finely attuned and effective uh, public diplomacy, as well as silent diplomacy, when managing issues in our relations with Russia. Russia expertise and a high degree of general knowledge about Russia play a crucial part in the effective conduct of both. Now, the major challenge is how do we maintain and even build expertise in an era with lim very limited contact with Russia? There's a need to think creatively about that question. Because it is in Norway's national interest to have research institutions, and that's institutions in plural, civil society with Russia expertise and experience. And let there be no doubt, speaking on behalf of the Norwegian government, we respect academic freedom. Civil society uh, is, should, and is free from government interference. My point, simply, is that it is a question of national interest of Norway that we have Russia expertise beyond just the, the foreign service or our intelligence service. On the uh, Norwegian government side, we have started thinking about how to deal uh, with this challenge. Going forward, we're interested in tapping into experiences and ideas from, from allied, partner, allied and partner countries as well. And one track we are working on, in, uh, on is how to increase interest in applying for Russia-related studies. We worry that many potential future Russia experts are reluctant to go down that path due to the limited career prospects. And there's a need to talk up such studies to make them more attractive. Another track is to coordinate, coordinate and tie more closely together the remaining expertise, both in academia and civil society and government. And we're looking at ways to create more opportunities for contact and experience sharing uh, across institutions and government offices. And here we would also like to uh, explore synergies with like-minded countries, including uh, in the framework uh, international organizations, in the framework of international organizations. And I would also like to, to highlight the role that academia, uh, academia and researchers play. By identifying and acting on gaps in our knowledge, you contribute to bringing expertise forward and spreading it far beyond your own institutional circles. And this conference is, of course, an excellent example of how this happens in practice. And I would like to encourage you all to continue looking for opportunities to develop your research and share your knowledge. Our government has decided to dedicate specific funding to, this, uh, to our joint efforts to maintain and develop uh, Norwegian uh, expertise on Russia. In the government's budget proposal for 2025, 33 million Norwegian kroner is allocated for this exact purpose. And we are in discussions with partners such as NUPI on how we can best proceed. In general, I encourage a broad and inclusive dialogue among all stakeholders here in Norway and among our, uh, our allied and partner countries and how we best can build our Russia expertise. It will be an important success factor when navigating through challenging times ahead. And today's conference, with all the excellence gathered here in this room as speakers, panelists and participants, will be a perfect occasion to kickstart uh, this discussion. Thank you very much for your attention and all the best for today's conference and for the important work ahead. Thank you very much.